Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last video, we talked about this is now going to be a race car only, no longer going to be a street car. Big decision, but we did make it, and I'm going to kind of go over all the benefits of making this a race car only. This is this is huge. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to become easier and faster and lighter and cheaper and on and on and on, just because this is a race car only. So, okay, let's just go over some things. Uh, Here's the exhaust system. This is already built, uh, for better or worse. I mean, I've already got, I got like 10 videos on my channel. But I built this awesome dual exhaust system. And it sounds pretty good. And who knows, it may stay on the car. But it's heavy, and I don't really need it if I'm just going race car only. Uh, <coughs> so that's probably going to come off. Or at least it's going to be something I can install and remove. So that's definitely... That's one thing. I can buy going race car only. That exhaust system probably weighs like 50 pounds or I don't really know how much it weighs, but it's all steel or stainless steel. So pretty heavy. So that'll come off and we're just probably I'm planning right now is to do a hood exit. Uh, you can see where this is. So it'll just basically be a new pipe that just goes straight up <clears throat> out the hood. Obviously, it's going to be noisy as hell doing that, but probably sound probably be a obnoxious, but sound good at idle. It's probably what I expect. But hey, that's gonna save a ton of weight. And it's easier to work on. When you get under the car, you won't have that exhaust system dragging the ground or getting in the way, none of that. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> uh, there's another big one. Um, well, okay, I, let's just do electrical. That is a big one on its own. So before, like I said in the last video, I had two wiring harnesses in the vehicle. I had the Mazda harness, which is all of this, Mazda, Mazda, Mazda. But then I had this piece, which is, this is the standalone, separate from uh, some of that over there. There you go. This is my harness. This is what ran the MS3 Pro, and it had some heavy-duty relays and wires that ran like, uh, I don't know, cooling fans and ignition, injectors, things like that. So I had two harnesses, two ECUs. Uh, LOL for a couple people watching this. I used to have three ECUs. But uh, anyway, we had a bunch of stuff in here, so... I'm kind of glad that, you know, I just basically, because we're because we're going straight race car, we can just take out all the wiring, everything, and just wire it up for what we need. So, like, this old harness, I mean, let me find a good example. Yeah, look at this. Look, look at my hand. I mean, this is just an unbelievable amount of wires. Just It just never ends. There's got to be 100 wires there. It's crazy. So, we're going to save some weight. We're going to get rid of a lot of shit we don't need. That's awesome. Makes it easier to service, cleaner. I just, that was one thing I've always hated on this car is the wiring. Um, a while back, I went and cut a bunch of it off and for, just to force myself to redo it. So now I'm really glad that I just took it all out because, you know, it's gonna be way simpler when I'm done. Way, way simpler. We, uh, I did go buy a bunch of gauges and sensors I was gonna hook up. I'm even reevaluating that at this point to decide if I'm gonna really do that just for simplicity. We'll see. But, Bottom line, we get to redo the wiring in the car and it's gonna be way lighter, way simpler, easier to work on. That's a huge pro, huge, huge benefit. Electrical problems suck. So anything you can do to make that more reliable, that's a big pro. All right, let's move it right along. So there's a gentleman named Marshall. He's got a what's called a compressed air system in his car. He keeps it in the trunk. I don't have anything back here, but I'm going to copy his setup. So what he did, on his, he's got a Miata that's faster than mine. Uh, this car has run like a 690-something in the 8th. I trapped like 103. He's trapping 110. And he's running 650s. And I was running 690s. So he's quicker than me, for sure. Now, granted, when this thing's done, I'm hoping this will be fast, too. But this car has only run a 693. He runs 650s. And he does it with a lesser engine. Uh, he's got the same... Well... I've got a, he's got the same 99 car, but he's got a 99 motor, an eBay turbo, you know, kind of built on the cheap, and it's fast. And one of the big things that he does, he has this compressed air system. Sorry for rambling so much, but this guy, he built this thing. He has air tanks in the trunk, and then up here, I have an air conditioning compressor, but what he did was he went and bought a uh, Sandin, I think it's a 508. It's basically a big air conditioning compressor that goes on something, but he rebuilt it and turned it into an air compressor instead. And he just basically runs that hose to his air tanks. And he has a control system that cycles the pump on and off so that it shuts off when the pressure gets high enough. And then on his exhaust manifold, I don't have the same setup he has, 
But just to give you an idea, like here, here's my uh, Mazda setup. Obviously your exhaust gases go like this into the turbo, into the turbine. Well on his, he basically drilled a hole and put a pipe, hooked it to a valve, and whenever he hits a button, or however it works, it shoots a ton of compressed air right into the turbine, and it spools the turbo. And he's got videos, and it works amazingly well. Like, uh, actually what happened years ago, I made a post saying something like, oh man, what if you did this? And this dude just messaged me, and he's like, yeah, I've already done it. Works great. And I've wanted to copy it ever since. So that's another thing. That's still going on the car, even though it's race car only. Uh, I'm still going to have that. So back here, the plan is I'm probably going to have three five-gallon air tanks, and all three of them are capable of going to, I think, 250 PSI. And we'll probably run them up to 200. I might go higher. It just depends if I can get a compressor that goes that high. But anyway, that's that's going to be here no matter what. But before, since it's a street car, I was going to put a belt-driven uh, air compressor on the front of the car just like he did. Now, I still have air conditioning, so... It gets more difficult to figure out where to put it, but essentially, I'll go over here to my mock-up engine. Normally on a Mazda, your alternator, like here's the stock alternator, the little pivot goes right here and your alternator sits, you know, right here. I was going to put the AC compressor like down here below the alternator. That's going to be a lot of work. Uh, I don't even know if it'll fit, but from just kind of looking at it, I think it'd be close, but you could probably make that work. That's what I was going to do, but it adds weight. I got to build a bunch of custom brackets, pain in the butt. But at least then I can air up the tanks. And uh, but here's the thing, if it's a race car only, I don't need to do that. Uh, you could do it, but you don't have to. If I'm going to the racetrack, I'll have a pickup truck. So my plan is I'll just have an air compressor in the truck or on the trailer or something like that. Hell, they have compressed air at the track just for like airing up your tires and stuff. So anyway, I'll just bring a compressor in my truck and I'll use that to air it up between, uh, you know, basically make a pass, pull over, top the tank off, go again. <clears throat> so that's kind of cool. That's going to save uh, some work, and it's going to save some weight right off the front of the car, because I would have ended up building, all these brackets would have been built out of steel, plus the air compressor, plus all the hoses to go to the back of the car to air it up. So, you know, probably save 20 pounds, uh, which is nice, and it's less stuff to break. Uh, let's see. Oh, so, kind of getting into other benefits... There's going to be a lot of little things where you can save weight. So you can see, like, I have the, okay, the fenders are off. Don't worry. The car is going to have fenders. But uh, there's a lot of little things that I'm not going to need anymore. So I'll be able to take those off. Like, I took the wipers out. Like, all of it. The little motor and gearbox, the linkages, the wipers, the blades. I don't really know what all that stuff weighs. It can't be that much. But whatever it is, it's gone, which is nice. And then here's the secondary benefit. See this little space? I've always wanted to put my ignition coils here for a couple of reasons. One, it gets them out of the engine bay so they won't be so hot, and they're right there, so it'd just be perfect. But the problem is this area gets wet when it rains, and plus you have all those linkages for the wiper blades. So that really won't work. But now, since it's race car only, we can do that. So another benefit will be the cooling system, and uh, just kind of the amp load on the electrical. So I have these fans. These are badass fans. These are SPAL Extreme Performance. It's the strongest ones they made at the time I bought them. I don't even know. They could still be. They, they probably make something better now, but these are monster fans. This one pulls like 40 amps, and that one pulls 30-something. They move a ton of air. Uh, it's good for a street car, but I probably don't need them. If I'm just drag racing and I'm not driving on the street, you know, I can probably lose at least... Hell, you could probably take both of these fans off and just put like a 10 or 12 amp fan and that'll probably be all you need uh or put a pair of really lightweight fans or something so you know these these uh the reason i bring it up these fans are heavy um and so that'll be taking a bunch of weight right off the front of the car i mean this is the head of the motor i think that fan over there weighs like 10 pounds and this one weighs probably eight pounds so some significant weight could come off the front of the car and these pull a lot of amps which you know that's bad for the electrical system and i need a bigger alternator to run them which also needed a bigger alternator for some other reasons, but because it's going to be race car only, now I probably don't. Now a regular alternator may be just fine. Now granted, this one was controlled by the Mazda ECU, so I'll probably use a different one just because, you know, I don't want to run that stock computer. But again, more benefits. Simplicity, less load, less electrical load, less weight. That's awesome. So as you can see, there's probably going to be a bunch of benefits to this going pure race car. I mean, everybody knows that, you know, there's benefits when you go race car, but 
for for me this is pretty nice it's going to make a lot of things easier and hopefully this kind of accelerates progress on the car because we've been kind of dragging our feet and part of it was because we were indecisive not know, really knowing what we wanted to do but now i think we got a plan race car only pickup truck trailer that's going to be the plan so anyway hope you guys enjoyed this uh there's going to be a lot of updates coming up where we're going to be building a race car only Till next time, y'all take it easy.